Welcome to the Write Your Own Story podcast. I'm your host, Betsy Leonidas, and the founder of the Write Your Own Story company. Girl, I can tell you right now, you are definitely enough. Here we value service, sisterhood, connection, laughter, and that super genuine, keep it real, tell you like it is honesty. My hope is at the end of each episode, you realize you can do whatever it is you dream about and that you are not alone with what you struggle with. I'm hoping that you are snapping and clapping and hell yes in your way through each one of these episodes. So if this tracks with you, let's get started. I'm so glad you're here. Welcome everyone back to the latest episode of the Write Your Own Story podcast. I'm your host, Betsy Leonidas, and it's just me today. I am here to tell you all about the five tips I have to make this your best summer yet. I am so passionate about building a life that is full of intention and balance and, you know, really serving more of how I want to feel versus all the things that I want to get done. And magically the things that I need to get done, which is quite a lot still gets done. So that really is the basis behind this entire podcast. This really is dedicated to all the women out there who are just like me, who are trying to find balance amongst, you know, a very busy, full life. And I think it's hard for all of us to try and balance it all, both for how we want to feel, how we want to show up for our family and the relationships in our life, how we want to serve either at work or in our community. But really, this is all, this whole episode, its intention is around building a summer around balance and joy. And how amazing does that sound? So where this comes from, So I've said this since I've started with Write Your Own Story. I will work no more than 20 hours a week, um, if at all possible. And I, uh, you know, I run my own company, so I'm the one holding myself accountable for that. I also am a single parent of four children. So when I say if I can find balance and if I can find joy and peace in the everyday of my life, absolutely positively so can you. Even if your kids are little, even if your kids are teens, we can do this, girls. We can find a life with balance and joy. So this method is one that I use each season of every year. So whether you're an entrepreneur and you're trying to figure out how to fit your workload in, or if you are a stay-at-home mom and you are balancing so many things, or you're somewhere in the middle, we all have different seasons of life. I find honestly what dictates the seasons is when my kids' sports schedule changes, um, because that has a big impact on the rhythm of how some of the bigger parts of my week run. Um, So as we are sitting here, it is the end of May and we are getting ready to dive into summer, this is a new season for me. So I get to sit down and I have and planned out what I want my summer to look like. And most importantly, what I want my summer to feel like. And it makes me so excited for summer. I used to get so overwhelmed. Granted, this was when my kids were really little about the thought of summer because I'm like, oh my gosh, they're so hard to take care of. You know, they're so needy. They're so demanding. Um, And it's gone less from, you know, they can get their own snacks. They can wake up and make their own breakfast. Fist, but I'm their chauffeur. They need me to drive them everywhere. They have interests. They have camps. We have signups. So as you guys know, in different stages of life, the demand changes, but I am so excited for this summer. And for me, this summer is just really about slowing down. I think I feel this extra and I'm sure everybody else does because May is cray. Is it may Is it mayhem? Is it May is cray? Whatever it is, May's not okay. Um, even to my friends in the Northeast who don't get out until the end of June, everyone's like, what is May? Why is May so May? It's harder than December sometimes. So I think that's why like, I am so excited to plan out summer in this way because man, oh man, there's going to be a big shift. Um, okay. So really there are five steps to how I do this and legit, I do this every season. The thing, the step number one, this is going to be the hardest part for you guys is to let go of productivity and focus on how you want to feel. I know, I know you're like, Betsy, how am I supposed to do that? I have so many things on my plate. Uh, You know, there are so many things that have to get done. I swear to you, if you focus on how you want to feel, your to-do list will get done. I swear. But what makes summer and any season so special is if you are approaching it from a point of intention and how you want to feel when you're doing the things on your list every day. And you'll find that it gives you a new evaluation tool for the things on your list every day. So for me, I want to feel peaceful. I want to feel balanced. I want to feel connected. Um, but it's all around, you know, and those, those words kind of ebb and flow um, based on what are the things on my to-do list, but we'll get to that. But number one, you have to have this massive mindset set shift of 
what are the million things I'm going to get done today? Or, oh my God, I have so many things to do this summer. Or, oh my gosh, we have so many camps and whatever to just, how do I want to feel this summer? How do I want my kids to feel this summer? How do I, how do I want my family to feel this summer? And if you can lead by that intention, I swear as a single parent of four who also works, everything else falls into place. I mean, it's as graceful as life is, right? It's not like it's perfect, but I promise you this has changed my life to think this way. So step number one is you really, okay, listen to this podcast all the way through. You guys are driving or unloading the dishwasher or I don't know what you're up to on a walk. Um, thank you for listening. And um, when you are finished with this podcast, I want you to then go grab a glass of wine or in the morning, grab a cup of coffee, print out some worksheets that I'm going to link in the podcast. And we're going to go through this together. But so the next couple of steps have worksheets that go with them. But first and foremost, we're going to let go of productivity and focus on how you want to feel. Two is when you grab your glass of wine and you're sitting on your back patio, or you're grabbing your cup of coffee before the kids, you know, give your kids their iPads in the morning and let yourself sit and think for a bit. I want you to dream of what the life is that you actually want this summer. Okay, so let's dive into that a little bit. This is really like a dreaming brainstorm. So this is where you want to just get a piece of paper. You want to print out the download that I'm referencing. And I just want you to dream of what does your dream summer look like? Okay, yeah. Do I like want to be on a yacht in, you know, Italy with, I'm not even going to name who, but yeah, for sure. But like, also I'm super excited about the summer that is my reality, but what does the dream version of my reality look like? So what are your hopes and dreams for the summer? Um, specific to your family. Are you guys, do you want to feel super connected to your kids? Do you want your kids to step into their independence? Um, what are your specific hopes and dreams around your health? You know, are you really just going to embrace the beautiful body that you have right now and take the pressure off and wear the swimsuit and show up and get in the pool with your kids? Or are you going to do that and also hit the gym and make sure that you find 15 minutes to just move your body every day so that you feel more confident when you're at the pool? But again, what are your health goals? What are your goals for your family? What goals do you have for your friends? If you run a business, what goals do you have for your business? What are those sort of hopes and dreams that could happen this summer specifically around those kinds of categories? Feel free to add in other categories, um, but these are the, you know, just kind of the big buckets that I usually go through. It's like, okay, what do I want for my family? What do I want for me? What do I want for my health? What do I want for my business? And that's pretty much, that's pretty much it. But then I want you to think of, now, those are sort of like, I like to do things in buckets because that's just how my brain works. So those are the buckets of the brainstorm. Now let's sit down and think about what do you want each day to feel like? Now that's not like, I want to wake up in the morning. This isn't your daily routine. This is, I want to feel relaxed. I want to feel joy. I want to feel excited about the things that we have on the plate today. I want to love driving my kids around because I get to hear these crazy teen conversations that are happening in my car. Or I want to teach my little one how to swim because one, that's a life skill and oh my God, we can all finally breathe. And two, because like what a special time to connect with your kid. But what do you, you know, essentially, what do you want to feel like each day? Do you want to feel like you are a badass in charge of your health? Do you want to feel like you are leaning into your business? Whatever it is, you get to decide categorically, how do you want to feel each day of summer? And then what else do I like to talk about? Oh, oh, I love this rule. Sorry, I'm just reading my notes because you know I have so many notes for this, but this is my rule. Don't write down anything that doesn't make you smile because if you are just kind of getting back into our, all of our old habits of thinking about productivity, that doesn't belong here. Productivity will come, I swear. But I want you to be smiling when you're writing on this page. Everything should feel good. What lights you up about all these things? Is it the connection that you're going to have with your family or your friends? Is it slowing down? Is it creating something meaningful? Is it serving your community? Whatever it is, this is your brainstorm. Those are the types of questions I want you to think about when you think about what does my dream summer look like? Okay. Now step three is we're going to set a clear vision for what your life and your family looks like so that you can protect that with wild abandon, right? Because it's one thing to have a brainstorm and be like, oh, 
okay, I've thought of a million things and this is what I want summer to look like. But now I like to get really specific because then specific means simple, which is really hard to do. But the simpler you are in planning anything for your life or your business, the more likely you are to be able to hold yourself accountable and to achieve it. So literally, I want you to think about, narrow down all the things that you thought about when and answer this question. How do I feel doing what I love? Three words, tops. So for me, calm, connected, and happy. That's what I want to feel all summer long. I want to feel calm, connected, and happy driving my kids to swim team in the morning, even though they're going to be griping about going, I don't blame them. I'm griping about getting up in the morning, but it's my choice to either be like, "Ugh, yes, this sucks. Or I said, I wanted to be calm, connected, and happy this morning. So I'm going to give that my best shot. Hey, we're all human. (laughs) It doesn't always happen, but this is the intention so that when we're fighting over who gets to play the first song, I can take a deep breath remain how I want to feel and get in there and parent and, you know, set some boundaries and be like, okay, this is how we're going to do it for the car ride, et cetera, et cetera. But my point being is that I know no matter what all summer long, I'm protecting calm, connected, and happy. The end. Okay. Next thing that I want you to boil down that brainstorm to are what are the game changers you want? So for me, and again, three things tops, I want to do less. I want summer to feel like the most massive downshift. I want to have really connected family time and I want to be very intentional when I work, meaning not distracted and really, truly free all in work time. So, okay, that sounds great, but I'm going to have to be really specific about how I do that. That doesn't, some of those things aren't going to happen all day, every day. Um, So it's important to be realistic about that. But as we go through this process, you'll see how I'm actually able to execute that. I also love the exercise, whether this be in business planning or in life planning is that I'd never say out loud visions for this summer. So the things like, let's go for it, girls. Let's think of things that we really are like, you know what? I just, I really want this. So for me, I want to do things that push me out of my comfort zone. Um, I, that to me is launching a passive income stream for work. That's a big deal. I'm going to be recording various courses that people can download and take on their own. It's hard to record a podcast and to get five episode recordings in, but I've made a very simple, very manageable plan that I can have it all done by July 1st. And I'm feeling really good about it. And then I can lean into the second half of summer into promoting it, which is so much easier for me because marketing is my thing. Um, I also want to lean into brand deals that feels so out of my comfort zone, but that is a great way for me to make money on this platform. It's also a great way to connect with more women and bring them into the community and hopefully help encourage them and inspire them with the amazing stories that I get to tell about other women. Um, and I want to initiate, this is more of like a social kind of thing. I want to initiate more with my community and show up more. I have noticed in this phase of my life, um, I've kind of, because I am only working 20 hours a week and because I am a single mom of four, um, I have kind of gotten into like this and I I joke all the time and I mean it, I'm in my rest era. Um, I find myself kind of being a hermit crab and which is so unlike me. So I want to start getting out of my comfort zone a little more and initiating more things with more friends, um, doing more adventurous things with friends. Like I just bought a paddleboard. I can't wait to ask some girlfriends if they want to come to the lake and paddle um, or, you know, host a cocktail party at the back patio when the kids are at their dad's or just stuff like that are very natural to me in my past life. But I've been in this kind of hermit crab stage. And so it is time for me to come out of the cocoon this summer and show up. Um, so now we've thought about when we're talking about our special vision for our life, which is our third step. So how do we feel this summer? What are the game changers for this summer? And what are some of those things where you really want to kind of push yourself this summer and the vision for my, the vision statement, which is, I really like to boil all of those, um, is the number one thing for my life this summer is I don't want to feel claustrophobic. I have the ability, all of us have the ability to overschedule, um, especially when we're managing children too. I don't want to feel claustrophobic at all. I don't want to hate the day before it's begun because I'm overscheduled. I don't want to, you know, feel like I've said yes to everything um, because I'm just trying to put myself out there. I want to be intentional about it. Um, so I know that feeling, I know that feeling makes me feel overwhelmed, makes me feel icky, makes me feel like borderline angry for some reason. I don't know. I'm just being honest. Um, So most importantly, I do not want to feel claustrophobic this summer at all. And that's coming from a mom of four. I'm always, I have no personal space. 
Oh, you guys. Okay. So let's just recap where we are so far. So number one is that we have put down the productivity pen and we are picking up the warm and fuzzy feeling pen. And that is how we are starting this exercise. We have brainstormed of what an amazing summer would feel like. Um, and what does that look like? We've thought about it in some, some, some specific buckets, but feel free to let your mind absolutely wander. And then we kind of narrow that down to get really specific on a special vision for what you want your summer to feel like. Mine is breezy and not claustrophobic. Um, some pushing myself in some big ways and really staying calm, connected, and happy. Okay. The next step is we're going to choose goals that support this vision and build the summer that we want. So for me, I am launching a downloadable course that generates passive income. This is huge for me and my business. This has been a ton to figure out. It's taken me almost a year in the making. Um, this very much piggyback, piggybacks off of the Female Founders Academy and makes it more accessible for those who can't commit to a full-time class. So I truly feel like I'm serving the community as well as continuing to be creative about revenue streams in my business. So that feels really good. That said, this summer I am traveling. I'm taking one, if not two girls trips, and I'm taking my kids out to California. I am playing tennis. I am recording the podcast. I am taking a day off a week to hang out with my kids. So in order to be able to execute launching a downloadable course that is five different courses, building the platform for that, and then putting the promotion stuff behind it, I have had to keep my plan to get there incredibly simple. What are the simple steps? How do you spread it out and how do you just chip away at it one step at a time? So for me, that means I'm recording this starting this last week of May and moving forward one episode a week until I'm ready to launch July 4th, which is Independence Day sale, which I feel like is so great because I'm all about women being more independent. Um, so I'm feeling really good about that. So that means I need to sneak in one more recording session a week. I can do this. I know I can. Also, full disclosure, I have help three days a week and they're at my dad's one day or not at their dad's, not my dad's. They're at their dad's one day a week. So I have leaned in and asked for help um, from you know morning till about four o'clock each day. So my days are able to be constructed like they're almost a school day. Um, I'm probably going to have to leave the house, uh, when they're home to be able to get work done because it's so hard for me to not feel claustrophobic when it's mom, 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 cause that's what they want. Um, but one day a week, Wednesdays just happens to be my week where I am all in me and the kids. And then of course our weekends. Okay. So that's goal. Number one for me is to be able to launch that downloadable course. Goal. Number two is to lean into those brand deals as a way to grow my brand awareness and to have an additional revenue stream. That doesn't mean that I am pitching brand deals all summer long. Um, that means that I'm leaning into finding the right deals that fit, getting creative ways to work with brands, and maybe doing one brand reel a week. So in order to do a brand reel, you have to pitch to the brand. They have to accept it. They, you have to write the copy for it. You have to come up with the story for the reel. It's more than you think. Um, you have to, you know, I have to record the ads for my podcast. I have to think about how I want to integrate them in stories. So I have really put guardrails around that. I could try and get a bazillion brands, but I'm going to try and just do one reel a week and see where that takes me. Um, whether it be one brand and it works really well or a couple of brands and I learn sort of what brands I work best with and how to tell creative stories. But again, it's on me to keep that super simple and to keep it in a very manageable way so that I don't feel claustrophobic all summer long. I want to forever remain connected with my kids this summer. I want them to feel like mom is all in. Um, and so that's how I'm managing leaning into brand deals because I want a slow, lovely summer. Um, and then the idea of really showing up and more in my community and AKA stop hiding. I'm not totally hiding, but I'm medium hiding. And so I have to probably think a little bit more about that, but like, maybe it's, you know, asking more friends if they want to go for walks in the morning or trying to get a girl's group together for dinner or offering to have a cocktail party at the house in the backyard, um, or getting a group together to go kayak and paddle at the lake. Um, but you know, just kind of organizing maybe a couple of, Ooh, backyard yoga. That sounds really fun. Followed by mimosas. Okay. I'm brainstorming. Um, so if you want to hang out with me this summer, this is me officially putting myself out there. Let's do something fun together. Um, but again, it's not like I'm going to say I need a weekly dinner club because that is beyond the scope of what I can handle this summer. So it is all about scaling relative to that vision that we've just set in the previous step. 
So yeah, those are my three goals and I'm feeling really, really good about it. And those are the goals for me. Goals for my family. Oh my gosh, I can't wait to watch my oldest continue to work on tennis because he loves it. He's also a drummer and he's got like really fun, you know, plans to move up in his school of rock and he like performs and he's going to try a camp for drumming and see if he loves it. He's doing his first sleepaway camp, like so many great things that I can't wait to support him in. You know, same goes for my daughter. She's doing a new camp and she's all about her girlfriends and I'm making her do swim team begrudgingly, but she's in this like fun sand volleyball thing. And like, I just cannot wait to watch her do what she loves. And same with my twins and they're still smugly and they love their mama when the older two are just all about their friends. They still love mama though. And so, you know, I'm just going to soak up every minute I get of going for walks with them with the dog and them climbing in my bed this in the morning with their iPads wide journal and just all that stuff. I'm not missing any of that. And so the last thing, it's like, okay, great, Betsy, but like, how do you actually execute this? This last step, well, it's the second to last step, but this last worksheet that I have to offer you guys is all about us building a sustainable structure. And I'm literally obsessed with this. Okay, so it's a new season, right? It's summer. I build a grid. Again, print this out. It's free. I want you to have it because I just, I want everyone to be able to do this. And literally it's just two columns. It's a life priorities. And for me, it's a work priorities, but let's say you're a stay at home mom. Maybe it's a family's priorities and a me priorities. Um, life priorities for me just is kind of the me priorities, if you will. So let me walk you through mine. Let's just really get into what Bets is up to. Okay. So let's, I always, first and foremost, always start with your life priorities. Work fits into your life, not life fits into your work. Also taking care of you, your family is just as much of a priority as taking care of you, but you have to prioritize taking care of you. Your family will benefit from it so much and what a beautiful gift to your children to have them have a mom who shows how to make them a priority and for them to see that kind of benefit and for them to see how much you enjoy. Okay, so I play tennis. Um, I'm actually playing on two teams this summer. Look at me, what am I, a professional? So I have tennis practice on Monday and Wednesday. And then I play in one of the matches on Thursday. Okay. So that's tennis three days a week on Tuesdays and Fridays. I lift. So for me, tennis is also incredibly social. So I have checked a social bucket. I've checked a health bucket. I've checked another health bucket with lifting. I lift with a trainer at the gym. And then I also on the weekends, I promise myself that I will either paddleboard or do yoga or go to cardio tennis, something where I am doing a class with a friend, hitting the water with a friend or going to cardio tennis to hang out with friends so that I continue to be social. So also for my life priorities, Wednesday is my day off of work. Hands down. I am, I don't have my sitter on Wednesday. They don't go to their dads on Wednesday. This is my day. And what I have found with my kids at my age is yes, I can take them to the pool and I will, cause I love the pool and I love seeing my friends at the pool, but what like really bonds the four very different ages. Okay, fine. Technically three, cause two of them are twins. Different ages is for us to do like adventures. So what are we going to do on a Wednesday that everyone is going to enjoy easier said than done. But like, I mean, and that doesn't have to be an all day adventure. That could be like, I take the kids and we go paddle and kayak and fish. And that's a couple hours, but I would rather have a five hour adventure or a three hour adventure. And then for plenty of downtime and maybe pool in the afternoon or s'mores and a barbecue, then like just kind of filling the day with nothing. So I really try, especially because, you know, I have a teenager and a teenager. They're all about their friends and they're all about their decompression time. So I want to be able to give that to them because I don't want them to hate Wednesdays. I want them to be like, yeah, it's mom day. Let's do this. Let's go do something fun. Maybe we'll make a summer bucket list for mom days. I'm not really sure, but like that day is going to be an awesome day. And again, it's just going to be, it's not going to be about like the, the grandiosity. Is that a word? God, I always need a word checker on this thing. You know, it's not going to be about like the biggest, bestest, greatest thing. It is going to be about the connection that I can have with my kids. And each summer is different because each age is different. So we're just kind of, kind of like learn as we go along. Are hikes the thing that people love the most? There's so many cool places to explore in Ohio. Is being on the water and fishing and doing that kind of stuff more enjoyable? Okay. Like we can go find different places around there. Are we all too old for the zoo? Maybe I'm so sad. I just want to go see the manatees. You know, it's just, you kind of lean into it and, and learn, but I just cannot, I'm looking forward to my Wednesdays more than any other day in the week. And that's why I want to make sure that I am so protective about my work priorities on Monday, Tuesday, Thursday, Friday, that nothing bleeds into Wednesday. Okay. 
So my long story short, that was a big old tangent about how excited I am for Wednesday, but that's how much I mean it is take this chart on the one column, literally write down everything in your life that you want to do on Monday through Friday, maybe even Saturday and Sunday too. protect that with wild abandon, block that in your calendar, ensure that you are going to do it. And then on your work priorities or family priorities, bucket the things accordingly. So for me on Monday, I have to prep for my course recordings. That takes around three hours. Usually that's tweaking the work that I already have, creating the files, creating the work, you know, the downloadable things to print out. Also my podcast typically launches on Monday. So then I have to do some post stuff behind the scenes. I have to do a blog post on the website. I have to link it to YouTube and then link it in my link in my bio for Instagram. I have to, you know, listen and approve the final episode in the shorts from my amazing podcast producer. But really Monday is all about getting me prepped to record on Tuesday for the business courses and making sure that the podcast that is launching this week is up and running. That's about four hours of work on Monday. And that means I have tennis practice in the morning and the rest of it is work. And I love that I have a few hours of wiggle room because maybe I want more than four hours to work. Also life happens. I got to pay bills. I got to do this. I got to do that. Maybe I can grab coffee with a friend. There's room to breathe, but come four o'clock, I'm all in on momming. My kids have swim team on Monday night randomly. So we're going to go do that. And maybe that means dinner at the pool. Okay. On Tuesdays, because Tuesday is just a lift day and I still have my sitter, I have way more time to work. So that way I can do my recordings and I can prep for my podcast guest the next day. Tuesdays, I'm also going to sit and probably plan out the rest of my social for the week and just really enjoy the space of the day. Wednesday, as I mentioned, day off, mom day. Thursday is kind of a busy day because it's a tennis match day. So that takes up a longer amount of time. And then I'm going to do a blog post based on the business course that I usually right? And I'm going to do one of those brand reels. That's a big day on Thursday, but you know, I got to get it done on Friday, I record my podcast, and then I have to upload all the materials. And then I probably should just look at the to-do list for both life and work and wrap that up. And also who wants to work a lot on Fridays, but also I don't work on Wednesday. So you better believe I work on Fridays. So my whole point is, is to write down all the things that matter to you in your life schedule those first, figure out what are the big buckets, whether it be for work, for family responsibilities, for kid activities, and make sure that you are slotting those in and wiggle your calendar around so that they all fit and that you can breathe. And then the last but not least, so, okay, that's literally this, this grid is my favorite thing in life because I know exactly how I want to feel in this season of life. I have then built my weekly rhythm. I am all about a rhythm. I just want a, a rhythm has space it has consistency and there's room to breathe because life happens and you can wiggle with it. And it's my very favorite thing. But then most importantly, I've built all of this as simple as possible. I've broken down the steps to reach my three goals, to connect with my kids. I've, you know, accounted for vacations, but most, most, most importantly, I have to hold myself accountable. Yes, life happens, things twist and turn, but at the end of the day, I'm responsible for my own feelings. So I am responsible for, are you connected? Are you calm? Are you happy? If you need to reevaluate and figure out how to find those things, that's on you, girl, to go get it done. Are you connecting to your kids on Wednesday or is work stuff starting to bleed over? Tisk tisk, not cool. This is your day with your kids. Block it with wild abandon. Is a goal to be more connected with your partner? Are you making that intentional time or are you showing up frazzled and, you know, because summer and the kids need everything. All I'm saying is that at the end of the day, if you build simple structures that are very much so grounded in how you want to feel and what you're excited about in life, it all falls into place, especially when you're the one driving and holding yourself accountable. Oh, you guys, that's my soapbox, but that's literally how I build a business in 20 hours a week, no matter what season of life, being a single mom of four. So I swear if I can do it, you can do it. And yes, do I like sometimes find my head absolutely spinning and does it pop off? Good Lord. Yes, I'm human. But I have to say my life has forever changed since I have put this practice into my life because for me and the way my brain works is the simpler, the better the fewer priorities, the better. And most importantly, grounded in the intention for how I want to feel, the better. Because then I can hold myself accountable. I'm genuinely so happy. 
<sighs> That's it, guys. So really, my call to action, honestly, is like if you want to, honestly, I would go print out the sheets. They're at writeyourownstory.co backslash free resources. There's four sheets to print out. It's the brainstorm. And then it's like really getting it down into what's your vision statement for the summer? What are your goals for the summer? And then how are you blocking your calendar accordingly? Don't forget, put down the to-do list and focus on how you want to feel. And most importantly, hold yourself accountable. I would print out those worksheets and then go wake up the next morning with a cup of coffee or go for a walk and listen to this podcast again and then block some time to write it all down or grab a glass of wine and sit on your back patio and throw on this podcast again and go through the worksheets and press pause because you are absolutely worth this type of intention. Your family will do nothing but benefit from it. And oh my Lord, ladies, we are a slow clap to the finish line in May for school. So I want nothing more than all of us to come up for air, look around and be so excited for summer. Okay, that's it. That's my five steps to building a summer that you're gonna love. I hope this helped. I would love to hear it. Thank you so much for listening. And if you know any other moms that would benefit from this out there, please share because all I wanna do is help. I love seeing happy, healthy, connected moms out there. And that is all I want for all. All of us. So thanks for listening and we'll catch you next time. Well, that's the end of this episode, but promise me you won't stop here with whatever it is you're feeling or dreaming about. I hope you leave today feeling empowered to live life just as you see fit. If this podcast was helpful to you, it would mean the world to me if you could leave a review on whatever platform you're listening on. I genuinely just want to help women live the life they dream about. So if this type of content tracks with you, subscribe to this podcast or visit our website, writeyourownstory.co to download digital courses or to grab a journal and a mug to just dream in and dream with. It's your life, lady. Do you. And just remember, I'm rooting for you and you've totally got this. Oh,